This is the world's largest inland delta, the Okavango. This place was a marvelous land of life. I met with the people who accepted the nature's fertility and suffering and allowed it as a part of their lives. I put the precious time I spent with them behind me and make my way to the world's largest man-made lake called Kariba, located on the border between Zimbabwe and Zambia. The Zambezi River is the lifeline of the southern African continent. The man-made lake Kariba is where the people who rely on that lake live. I'm heading there now. The Zambezi is a great river that flows through southern Africa. The river, which measures over 2,700 kilometers, stretches over six countries and flows into the Indian Ocean. It's the world's largest man-made lake, Kariba. My last journey begins there at Lake Kariba. Lake Kariba is a five to six hour drive from Harare, the capital city of Zimbabwe. This is the town of Kariba. It is famous as the point city for Lake Kariba. I can see why as soon as I approach the town's entrance. There are vehicles lined up waiting for tourists. The thought of, it would have been better if it didn't rain, only lasts for a moment. It's the perfect way to experience Africa's rainy season. Lake Kariba, which was made while building a dam in the middle of the Zambezi River, is the largest man-made lake in the world. Its area is three times the size of Jeju Island in Korea. In Zimbabwe and Zambia, which have no coastline, they call this lake the Inland Sea. Tawata. Customs Immigration 300. There's a place we must pass in order to reach Kariba Dam. Because Kariba Dam is between Zambia and Zimbabwe, you need a day pass to enter Zambia in order to see the dam up close. Yeah. <laughs> Kariba Dam was built in 1959 for the demand for electricity in Zimbabwe and Zambia. It is said to play a great role in the development of both countries. Thank you. 
The height of the Kariba Dam is 128 meters. Its length is 579 meters. The scale of the dam up close was enormous. With the completion of the dam, not only did the power generation increase, but so did industry, agricultural water supply, and tourism development. Since then, Kariba Dam has become a symbol of economic development in this area. It's border area where there are no barbed wires or soldiers with guns. <laughs> it is a view quite strange, yet enviable. People crossing Zim to South Africa, South Africa to Zim, there uh. are very lot of people. But this side, it's interesting. Very free and very open. Uh, very free. Wow, it's really big. Here is the world's most important hospital. If you make a person, you can make a person, you can make a person, you can the view of the lake shining in the sunlight is very beautiful. However, Lake Kariba had a turbulent history. Zimbabwe, which produces no oil or gas, received one-third of its power supply from the Kariba Hydroelectric Dam before the development of its coal thermal power generation. I have crossed into Zambian land from Zimbabwe. It made me think how easy it could be to cross borders. It feels like I'm at a famous tourist attraction rather than at a border. We don't have anything much to say, but we're having fun, so much fun here. Uh -huh. How we enjoy our day. We, <laughs> we hope we can... Woo! We can <laughs> to come back here. The world is so beautiful. People come and play with us. They come and play with us. It's not easy to get out of other countries. We can't get out of that way. We can this spot in front of the signpost must be a popular photo zone. I decide to take a photo myself. But the mood seems a bit awkward. I come to find out, someone already claimed this photo spot. Well, I feel a bit embarrassed. The locals ask me if I want to take a photo together. 
I feel like I'm a famous celebrity. I take the photos as I anticipate for the day when freedom and peace will come to the Korean border. Punta's Lake Kariba, the world's largest man-made lake created from the building of a dam, look like? On my way to the lake, I encounter a hippopotamus. Can you stop here? Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, let's go see people. You go with me? Yes, I'll go. <laughs> Thank you. So it's not dangerous? Uh, the hippos are dangerous. Oh. Especially when you are in between them uh -huh. and the water. If, if the hippo is on the land yeah. and you are in between the hippo and the water, it's very dangerous. Oh. So you have to give the hippo the, 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 the way to go back into the water. Han Kazukin Gabuda. <laughs> For some reason, we have a friendly image of hippos, so I go closer. The hippo opens its mouth wide and yawns. But they say hippos don't yawn because they're sleepy. mouth open there, trying to show you that I'm here. This is my territory, so ah. it exposes those teeth mm. so that you get scared and stay away mm. from them, yes. Contrary to their naive and gentle image, hippos are very sensitive and aggressive. They are said to be one of the most dangerous animals living in this area. Out of the animals that live on land, hippos are the third largest after elephants and rhinos. Their skin is very sensitive, so they stay in the water on days when the sun is strong. But there's more than hippos in this lake. There's a crocodile as well, that side. You see in front of those people fishing, see yeah. there? There's a big crocodile. Oh, there's a big crocodile. <laughs> ah, we, can, we can walk closer there. There? <laughs> hey! This is the land of the animal. Hey! 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 I thought I could only see wild animals at a national park or a wildlife sanctuary, but there are many animals here at the lake. There are crocs nearby, but the people just sit back and relax while fishing. Hello. Hello, how are you? Yeah. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. How are you, sir? Good. Thank you, sir. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Did you get some fish? Yes. I've got this small one. Huh? They are too tasty with salt. Salt? <laughs> yes. <laughs> because they, they get salt so easily. Ah. Right. Oh, small one. Right, what is the name? Fish. Just brim. Just brim. Right. So, uh, yeah. so here is a hippo. He, their hippo territory, crocodile, right. crocodiles, right. humans, humans. Right. But you live together. Ah, we live together. Yeah. Uh, crocodiles, hippos, we live together. Only we respect each other. 서로 자리만 지켜준다면요. 각자의 영역을 지켜준다면요. 사는 건 문제가 아니네. Oh. 
Oh! <laughs> right. Very good timing, huh? Right. I right. get this. Okay. Humans. And animals live together here. I'm reminded of the word coexistence. It's a very peaceful scene. If there was a utopia, I imagine it would look like this. The next morning, I head to a dock at Lake Kariba. Kariba Hosur was Sinica. Credo Burhambon, Halyova de Gisio. I decide to visit one of the island villages on Lake Kariba. Thank you. Oi. Yeah. <laughs> so I go. But before we leave, we need to make a stop. Hello. It's a station to fill the boats with gas. It seems we have a long way to go. I'm speeding across the world's largest man-made lake. It feels more like an ocean than a lake. How far from here? Very far. One hour, two hours. One and a half hour. However, the island I was told was one and a half hours away is nowhere to be seen after two hours, and I am getting sleepy. How much time has passed? I can finally see an island. There are many islands on Lake Kariba. This island is inhabited by about 300 fishermen. As soon as I arrive on the island, children greet me cheerfully. The island looks relaxing, and it feels like I'm in another world. <laughs> the village looks very welcoming. Oh, 
I move my footsteps to where the village people are gathered. Hi. How are you? Fine. I thought it was perhaps a village hall, but it's a bar. There are five of these bars in this island village. I look inside, and it looks like a small store. So here is people are here. Around 300. Oh, is it tiger fish? Tiger fish. <laughs> it's the tiger fish I tried to catch before. This is good, but it's dry now, salted. Yeah, uh, salted. Here is a cookie cookie. Cooking is in full swing in the bar's kitchen. Ooh. I inhale smoke while trying to see how the fish are cooking. Look at them, man. Hi. Hi, go. It's a small village, but they have everything except for the things they don't have. There are no fences here, and all of the houses are open. Hello, hi. How are you? Good. Hi, hi. I meet a big family. Hello. Ooh. Hello. Hello. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> my young brother. Your brother. Yes, my cousin. Your cousin. And my big brother. Big brother. Yeah, yes, and my uncle. Uncle. Yes, and two wives. Your wife. Yeah, the first one is in front, and the second is back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Big family, huh? Big family. Yeah, family. <laughs> 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 여기 딱 정형적인 이곳 마을의 부엌이네요. <laughs> 정심하시나 보다. <laughs> 참 이쁜 이쁜 오븐 같아. <laughs> 아하. 아이고. Thankfully. They invite this foreigner into their home, even though I came Hi. unexpectedly. Your kid. <laughs> it's a very simple lifestyle. It seems a bit lax, but this house made of mud was built in order to defend itself against the African heat. <laughs> The government towards the fishing uh, for this, it is the government that introduced uh, these fishing cooperatives. So we had a problem here in Zimbabwe in 2008. There was hyperinflation in Zimbabwe. Now the government is now in a position to re-empower these fishing cooperatives. But we've got um, our permanent residence at, at town there in Nyamunga, where there is the demo. Mm. This village was formed under a migration policy. Thus, most of its residents have a house on the island and another in the city. Hey, uh, hello. <laughs> in the yard in front of the house, there are women making nets. They are made with nylon sacks. Isn't it such a creative idea? They are masters at reusing products. I try to make it with them.
So where is the your port? Yeah. That one? That is Saibo one. Aha. I didn't very recently. This one is Kogi Nangnun de Hambon. Taraga Giro is Sayo. That is Saibo one with a red. Yeah, Kumulo Chosa Samnun de. What don't go to Chapilchi Kunguman deo? The daytime is too hot, so they retrieve the net in the late afternoon. Fishing is done on average twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening. Okay. Yeah. What kind of fish will be caught? They pull in the net for a long time. Finally, there's a fish. Africa is a lot of Kogiri Javas. This one is a freshwater fish called tilapia. <laughs> I'm told they catch about 20 to 30 kilograms per day. Even the weather is good, you can catch it 100 kg. Oh, really? 100 kg? Yes. Oh, it's good. It depends according to the weather. Weather? Yes. Everyone seems to have caught many fish today. In Lake Kariba, there are many types of fish, including tiger fish tilapia, and sardines. Among them, the tiger fish is the most common. Hey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> The fish that are caught are sold right away. A boat comes to the island every two to three days to buy the fish. On days where there is no boat like today, they clean the fish and dry them like this. Dried tiger fish are said to be pretty popular. The fisherman I accompanied invites me to dinner. On the menu is the fish that was caught today in addition to chicken. There is so much food, it feels like a celebration. <laughs> All the family members gather to eat dinner. <laughs> Doesn't the dining area seem a bit messy? <laughs> This foreigner from far away must fascinate them. The people are amused by all of my little actions. I think happiness comes not from materialistic riches, but from sharing each other's warmth. And the others will go for fishing, especially men. And then you rest in the morning, you take tea, and then in the afternoon, this, 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 the meal, the same as this one, will prepare during the day, at around 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock. We take the meal, sadza plus a, a relish. It might be not fish, sometimes beef or pork. Mm -hmm. Then in the evening, the same thing will be done. So, and the process keep on going, going, going. The same cycle. This is our, our, our living, the way that we live here. Nice. <laughs>
The next day I head back toward Lake Kariba to catch a ride on the cruise. They say there's nothing better than a cruise to enjoy the scenery of Lake Kariba. The boat floats along slowly with no rush. The lives of the people pass by along the lake. A beautiful rainbow forms over the canvas of the blue sky. It seems like a gift for me from the Lake Kariba sky. <laughs> the magnificent view of Lake Kariba is plenty to feel the romantic mood of the cruise. Another pleasure on this cruise is meeting all of the wild animals that live nearby the lake. Usually, a herd is only one bull, the rest will be females. So, due to such. The scenery of the lake comes together like a photo in my heart. Africa. It was a magnificent land where nature unfolded itself. The breathtaking landscapes allowed me to taste true freedom. And the vitality of the wildlife on this land left an overwhelming impression in my heart. Through this journey, my dream of traveling to Africa came true. It was a happy and very meaningful time.